Hello and welcome to video 18. In this video we're going to investigate a scenario that's pretty common, at least common to me, people who deal with stacks of books. If you've ever gone to pull out the middle book from a stack of three books, you'll find that the acceleration of the middle book is different than the acceleration of the top book. We're going to assume this bottom book stays still. So the question I have for you is, which of these books do you think will accelerate more? Do you think it's going to be the middle book or the top book? Now to make this problem a little bit more straightforward, we're going to assume that each of these books has the same mass, m. We're also going to assume that the coefficient of friction between the books is the same, which is probably true considering they're the same kind of textbook. And we're going to solve for the acceleration of block B and the acceleration of block A just in terms of this force, the coefficients of friction, and the mass of a book. Uh, we're then going to look at, well, what are those values uh, for a particular situation where the mass of the books is 2 kilograms and you apply 40 newtons of force. So let's draw a free body diagram first for object A. Right now I'll write MA just so you can distinguish it even though they all have the same uh, mass. And mass A really only has one force acting on it. So it's going to feel a force from B on A. It's going to feel a force this way. And I'm going to call that friction a, B, meaning the friction force between A and B, because that's going to be a little bit different than the friction force between B and C. For the second object, object B, there's going to be two forces. So object B feels the friction from AB, but in the opposite direction, that's Newton's third law. Or you can think of it as it's moving this way, so the friction force from the top block is going to oppose that motion and move to the left but it's going to have the same magnitude AB. And there's also going to be a friction from block C, which is also going to uh, try to oppose its motion. So that's going to go like this, so F, B, C. And then there's the force you're directly pulling on with your hand. And that's force F. So let's go ahead and let's... Um, draw the, well not draw, but write Newton's second law, and I want to do it for object B first, because that's a little longer. So when we add up the forces acting on object B, uh, if we're assuming this to be the direction of positive acceleration, uh, that's going to be F minus the friction between block A and B minus the friction between blocks B and C and that's going to be equal to m b a. Now, it's important to notice that unlike most problems where the acceleration is the same, here's one where it's actually going to be different. The acceleration for block b will be different than the acceleration for block a, so I need that subscript. Well, friction, as you may recall, I could just write this on the side here, is mu times the normal force, which, because these blocks are flat, is going to be equal to mu times the weight force. This mu will be a kinetic coefficient of friction because the blocks are moving. So we're going to take the force you're applying minus mu times the weight force. Now for block AB, for this force, the only weight force is the mass of block A times G. So that's going to be MA times G minus the friction force from here is going to be that same mu because these are the same books. They have the same coefficient of friction. Now, the weight force that you feel here is a result of mass A and mass B. So you're going to add the weights of these two. And you're going to get uh, mu A plus, or rather mass A plus mass B times G. And that's going to equal MB times AB the acceleration we're looking for. Now, here's where the problem gets a little simpler. Since we decided that all the books, we didn't decide, the books are all the same mass because they're the same book, uh, it does make the math a little bit easier. You can add these together because this is like M, 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 and M. In fact, in fact, what I'm going to do is because these are the same terms, when you bring these together, this is like mu mg, this is like mu mg, and this is like mu mg. That's a mouthful. So F minus 3 mu 
m g i'm dropping the subscript because the masses are all the same equals m a times b to solve for a b i just divide both sides by m so the acceleration of block b is equal to f over m minus 3 mu g this m cancels out with this so this is the expression for the acceleration of block b notice the acceleration here changes depending on how hard you pull the harder you pull the greater it accelerates also notice that you must pull with a force that is at least three times mu mg or else it won't accelerate so you've got to pull with at least that much and that kind of makes sense because if you pull less than that the static coefficient of friction is going to keep it from uh, accelerating to the left let's look at the top object this one's actually a little easier so if you sum the forces of block A you're going to get really just one force you're going to get F A B is equal to M times A I dropped the subscript because the masses are all the same but this is going to be the mass of the, rather this is going to be the acceleration in the for A which is different than the acceleration for B these are two different accelerations friction is still going to be mu weight force which is going to be mu mg so if that equals m a you get very conveniently that the masses cancel out and the acceleration in the a direction is just mu times g and what's interesting about that is that the acceleration for the top block is not affected by how quickly you pull this and the reason is there's only one force acting on it there's the friction force acting on the top block if you pull this faster the size of that kinetic friction force doesn't get any bigger or smaller it stays exactly the same so regardless of how fast or how hard I should say you pull block B block A is gonna have the same acceleration block B however will accelerate more the harder you pull it so what happens if you have numbers so when you go ahead and you plug in the numbers and just to make this easy let's assume that g has a magnitude of 10 meters per second squared it's just gonna make the math a little easier where we can do it um, in our heads really so the force is going to be 40 newtons over 2 kilograms minus 3 times 0 0.3 times 10 meters per second squared and what you wind up with is 20 minus 9 uh, which is going to give us an acceleration for block B that is let me just move this down that is uh, 20 minus 9 that's going to give us 11 meters per second squared for acceleration and then for object a for the top block that's going to be the mu 0 0.3 times 10 meters per second squared and that's going to give us an acceleration that is 3 meters per second squared so again the interesting thing here is that the top block has the same acceleration regardless of how hard you pull the middle block whereas the middle block does depend on how hard uh, you pull that. Also, the middle block, you need to apply at least some amount of uh, force that's equal to three times the kinetic friction force between the blocks. The reason it's three is you have one mass above block B, which is going to give you uh, one friction force, and then you have the mass of block A and B that cause the kinetic friction force in the bottom. So that gives you three of those. That's where that comes from. As always, Hope you find this helpful.